Welcome back to another Dodo Basics episode. In this video, we're going to cover runes, where they spawn, what they do, and why they're strong. There's currently six rune spawn locations in Dota 2. Two are in the river, two are in dire jungles, and two are in radiant jungles. The runes that spawn in the river are powerful runes that enhance your hero temporarily after grabbing them, and they can only spawn in the river. The runes that spawn in the four jungle spots are bounty runes, and they award gold to everyone on the team who takes them. Bounty runes are special in that they're the only runes to spawn at the zero minute mark when the game starts, the same time lane creeps first spawn. Because there are two bounty runes on your side of the map and two on the enemies, it's very common for both teams to get two bounty runes each. However, if you're more bold, it's a great idea to cross the river in anticipation of the bounty spawn so that you can bully your enemy away from the runes. If you can't get them to leave, it's sometimes easier to sit on top of the rune spawn and try to grab it before your opponent can. Later in the game, try to keep track of the rune spawns every 5 minutes because it's a large gold boost to your team. You want to be on top of the enemy's rune right at the 5 minute mark, then walk to your side of the map to grab your rune. The regular runes are more powerful than bounty runes, and they also spawn more often. They don't spawn at the 0 minute mark with creeps like bounties do, they instead spawn every 2 minutes starting at the 2 minute mark. However, unlike bounty runes, the other runes don't spawn as reliably. For every 2 minute mark that passes, only one rune gets spawned between the two spots. One of these spots gets left out. On top of that, the type of rune that spawns is random, other than it can't be a bounty rune. And the same rune also can't spawn twice in a row at a subsequent 2 minute mark. Much later in the game, both spots will produce a rune, and the same rune can start spawning twice in a row, but you should get used to only one rune being there for the laning stage. So let's cover all the fancy colors. This is the haste rune, and when grabbed, it gives your hero maximum movement speed. All heroes have a max limit to their walking speed, and haste rune puts you at that limit and keeps you there, making you immune to movement slows while it's active. You can best use this rune to escape from enemies or chase others down in ganks and teamfights with your superior speed. Just keep in mind that haste rune lasts shorter than most of the other runes. The double damage rune is very useful the entire game, but especially during the laning phase, as it doubles the damage that your hero deals by attacking. It gives you a huge damage advantage over your opponent, which should let you last hit and deny every creep while it's active, or if you're attacking enemy heroes, deal far more damage. The rune does double some of the damage increases that you have from items, skills, or talents, but only from things like attributes. To keep it simple, look at the white number that your damage provides. That'll be doubled by a double damage, but the green number won't be doubled by the rune. Illusion runes, when grabbed, will spawn two illusions of your hero for a limited time. To the player who creates them, illusions of your hero will have a blue shade, making it obvious which of your heroes is you. However, to your opponents, they all look like identical versions of your hero. They can attack or move like a regular hero, but they can't cast spells or use items. Illusions take much more damage from enemies and deal much less than your hero, but there are a couple good uses that make a difference and make them worth using. The simplest is it's still a damage increase whether you're farming a creep wave or you send them to a jungle camp to kill neutrals. They can be useful for scouting or you can use them to stack camps while your hero is busy elsewhere. Or if you execute a gank, they can be used to cause confusion in enemies that don't know which enemy hero to cast a spell on. Or best yet, you can bait out an ultimate or spell when an enemy thinks you're out of position. They kill your illusion, but that's not a big loss to you. When you pick up and use an arcane rune, it reduces the mana cost of spells you cast, and also reduces the cooldown of your abilities and items while the rune is active. Arcane runes are best used for heroes that rely heavily on spells to do damage, because they should be able to cast more of them, and they can cast them more rapidly. Of those heroes, it works best for heroes with really low cooldown spammable spells to make you cast them faster, or heroes with very long cooldown teamfight ultimates to lower the cooldown after you use them, or heroes who have very high mana cost spells, since it lets them push their hero farther. The Rune of Invisibility has a pretty accurate name. Using it will make your hero invisible for close to a minute after a short 2 second delay. While invisible, using any items, spells, or attacks will break the invisibility and the rune's buff is gone. With the invisibility, you should generally move somewhere and gank a hero while they don't expect you to be there. Just keep in mind that while you're invisible, try to stay out of tower range, as towers provide true sight over an area, meaning enemies will be able to spot you while invisible. Finally, there's the Rune of Regeneration. This rune will rapidly regen your health points and mana points to full. The regen continues until you hit both your max health and mana, or the timer runs out. The regeneration from the rune can also be interrupted by enemy hero damage, so make sure that you use it safely away from enemies if you want to heal. Keep in mind that one way to abuse regeneration is that you can continue to cast spells to lower your mana pool so that your regen continues restoring to your hero. 
and that way you can keep the regeneration rune going a lot longer than normal. Just keep in mind that if you hit full HP or mana, then your regen stops, or if you get too close to enemies while you're doing this and take player damage, it's also going to stop in that way. So that's all the runes. Other than the benefits that runes provide, they also work really well with the item Bottle. Bottle is a regeneration item that comes with three charges. Each charge regenerates some of your health and mana over a short period of time, but the regen can be stopped by enemy hero damage, kind of like regeneration rune. However, if your bottle becomes empty, you can refill the bottle in a couple different ways, the most common being walking to your fountain and you'll get three charges back. The other way to refill a bottle is by storing a rune in your bottle. You can do this by having the bottle in your inventory, and then when you right-click a rune, it will store the rune in your bottle. When the rune is stored in your bottle, you can later activate the rune when you're interested, and after doing so, there will be more charges in the bottle. Now, stored runes can be activated at any time in the next two minutes, but generally they should be saved until the rune buff is needed, or if you're thirsty and need to get access to the bottle charges. So for something like a bounty rune, it's fine to use it right away, but for the power runes like double damage, haste rune, invis, or whatever, you're going to probably want to save those until you really need to use them. If you forget that you stored a rune, it's going to auto-activate in two minutes, so try to abuse the rune buff to your advantage, like getting a kill on an enemy hero when you get an opportunity. And that does it for runes. I know that runes may seem a little bit random and overpowered, but they're one of the few things in the game that are random and not controlled by players, so that's what makes them a little interesting. Now, all buffs from runes can be removed by something called a Dispel. It's a Disable type. It's actually called Purges. So that's what we're going to cover in the next video, is all of the different types of Disables that exist, and what you might be up against, and how it influences your decisions. Thanks for watching!